Room number. Walk. Yeah. <laughs> you catch me in mid sentence. Um, okay, well, welcome to room number two. Make sure I'm in the correct room here myself. Uh, we're going to have a couple talks in this room. So the first one, let me go ahead and go to the proper introduction here. It's going to be Alex Montalvo. He is a GIS manager at Tetra Tech in Orlando, Florida. He is an experienced GIS analyst with a demonstrated history of working in renewables and environments industry. Strong information technology, uh, let's see, strong information technology, professional skills in mineral exploration, cartography, ArcGIS, water, wastewater, and reuse master planning, joint land use studies, hydrology, and spatial analysis. And he also has his FAA remote pilot certificate. Would you help me welcome Alex Montavo talking on asset management and GIS integration. Alex, take it away. Thank you, Steve. Um, and I apologize for that horrible bio there. That's from my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> uh, I, and you know, it's, uh, I want to thank everyone for joining this session. Uh, when you're competing against fun drones, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming to the boring asset management talk. Um, so again, my name is Alex Montalvo. Uh, I'm a GIS uh, manager. Um, but the more fun part is being a GIS analyst, helping uh, solve interesting problems. And my the topic is going to be about asset management and GIS integration. I'm going to talk specifically about condition assessment and doing business risk evaluations. And, uh, you know, for us in the GIS world and in the utilities world, there are there's a lot of legislation that's coming down um, from the federal government migrating down to the state um, where asset management and condition assessments and effective management of your infrastructure is gonna be a requirement. Um, it's a requirement for some um, SRF funding in Florida. And then uh, in 2020, the Senate passed SB 712, um, which is requiring a lot of utilities to implement some sort of um, asset management and condition assessment. Um, and there's also you know, a, a bunch of benefits uh, in terms of, you know, we're, we're trying to find ways to effectively manage our systems. This is what um, an average day on my desk looks like. And all those hard drives are filled with CCTV inspection videos. Um, so it's, it's a, effectively managing huge amounts of data. And I'm going to talk about um, some good strategies to do that. And also us as GIS professionals, you know, um, this asset management thing has been complex databases for uh, a long time. And there's a lot of great integration now with GIS. And there's a great opportunity for GIS staff um, to get involved with management and say, hey, I, I've got some tools that can help you do your job better um, to stay more informed. Um, you know, uh, William in the, in the last presentation you know, showed some great dashboards. And we can do uh, very similar things in aspect with work orders and infrastructure and condition assessments. And I'll show some, some examples of that coming forward. So with asset management, you know, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to effectively manage uh, the utilities resources, be that the stormwater, the water, the sewer. My conversation is gonna be geared more towards sewer. But you know, we're, we're trying to reduce risk. Uh, we're trying to reduce SSOs. And we're trying to migrate from a, uh, a, what was normally a reactive management of the sewer system to a more proactive management. Um, we're trying to identify problems before they become emergencies. And we're trying to extend the useful life of um, the existing infrastructure in the ground. You know, sometimes if, if you can catch uh, issues like roots in your system or grease balls, 
um, by identifying those early and putting those on a maintenance program, you can, you can prevent an SSO or an emergency in the future. And uh, you know, we're, we're all data people. So we wanna use GIS and data to support um, the effective allocation of dollars, you know, be that a CIP program. Um, we've helped people, you know, you use data to uh, show their management that, hey, we, we need more dollars for our CCTV program. And these are just some illustrations of um, some of the data that you get that I'll go into detail um, a little bit further. So we're here, we're talking about data-driven rehabilitation decisions. So what I'm gonna focus on um, an application from Innovise that's called Info Asset. And to show you how important asset management is becoming, um, Autodesk, which is you know, the, the Esri of the CAD world, they just purchased Innovise for $1 billion. And Innovise um, does a number of hydraulic modeling applications but they'd also, they also have probably the most advanced um, asset management and condition assessment and business risk evaluation um, application that's out there. I'm also gonna show you some, some alternatives that Esri provides to at least be able to import um, your sewer inspection data for gravity mains. Uh, they, they don't have a module for manholes just yet. My understanding is they're working on it. Uh, but you will be able to import um, sewer inspections and um, produce some effective illustrations based on that. Um, and we, we have all these different worlds that are sort of merging together. So you've got your, your sewer condition assessment people, and maybe there's a, there's a team in your engineering department that manages those sewer inspections. You've got your CMMS system that's um, recording work orders and um, complaints from citizens. Uh, you've got um, you know, your historic SSO events. And you know, a, a lot of utilities across the country, you know, as technology is advancing, there's that old foreman uh, that knows every part of your system, that knows where all the problems are, where all the valves are, the lift station that needs to be rehabilitated every month. We're losing all of that institutional knowledge as those folks retire. And now is the time to pick their brains and get all of that institutional knowledge from, from that staff. So this is, a, I'm not pushing Innovise products, but this is just a really good illustration of um, all the different components that go into an effective asset management program. So you've got the asset registry, and that's sort of you know where, where GIS is really critical, is we have to tell management and decision makers how good is our GIS representation of what's actually in the ground. Um, do our, the, the simple things, do our pipes snap to the nodes? Um, is our material registry correct? Um, inverts is critical. Is, is our invert information correct? Uh, our manhole diameters, and uh, you know that's really GIS's realm to identify those issues and and find ways to resolve that. Um, you know, there's integrations with the CMMS, the work order systems, and uh, in a moment I'll show you an illustration where having your work order system is great, but the next step is let's map that work order system and look at where our problems are in relation to where we have condition assessments. And that spatial component, when you show that to engineers and decision makers, sometimes that develops into a, a, a project and say, hey, we've, we've got to do a rehabilitation over there right now. And it, we'll sort of go into the calculation of what's called the business risk evaluation. So, and, and asset management speak, what that is, is, is you're defining two, two different things. You're doing a condition assessment and you're doing what's called a, a likelihood or so condition assessment, kind of likelihood of failure um, are synonyms. 
And then you've got what's called a criticality. And that's the consequence of failure. So think of like, you know, a sewer main that serves um, critical infrastructure within your city. Maybe it serves um, a large high school or it serves um, your emergency operations center or city hall or, um, you know, one, one of your uh, key business centers. So you, you've got a series of tools that identify, okay, if there is a problem here, what is the effect to the public? And you use those, those two different factors sort of in a matrix to, to determine the overall risk of any particular asset. And then we go into a concept that's called estimated useful life, where it takes into account age, diameter, material, and says, okay, th this is when uh, this particular asset is predicted to fail. So I talked about this as, are your, sewer, are your assets ac accurately mapped? Um, are your lift stations delineated? If, if you've got a, a sewer inspection program, there is a, a national standard from NASCA, which is the National Association of Sanitary Sewer um, uh, Commercial Operators, I believe. And they have a standard for your sewer contractors to collect sewer inspections and to collect manhole inspections. So ESRI and other um, asset management companies have developed tools whereby if that contractor does it correctly, and we've found contractors that sometimes cut corners and the, the NASCO PACP compliance requires that certain fields be recorded. For example, what's the asset ID of the pipe? Um, what are the manholes on either end? What are the invert elevations? If they do it properly, you can import that information directly into your GIS application. Um, believe it or not, a lot of utilities don't have maps for, okay, I need, I need to know where I have TV inspections right now. Seems like a simple ask, but um, you know, this is an evolving technology a lot of utilities don't have that, or they have to go like you know down to the the one person that manages TV inspections. Um, we know we want to increase the visibility, and I think we all understand that GIS is really important when you're talking about ma managing a government entity or or managing a utility. And this is where GIS can really show its importance to upper level management if they don't understand that already. You know. Where do you have manhole inspections? Um, do you have a snapshot of the condition of your, of your assets? And are your work orders mapped along with that as well? So I'm just gonna kind of skip over this part real quick, but we talked about condition and criticality. So condition, we look at the PACP, the actual physical inspection where the operator actually maps. You know, there is, there's a crack um, 30 feet along the pipe um, and they put a severity to that. Um, they'll say, um, I'm, I'm working from home and my, my niece just stepped in. Sorry, apology for that. So uh, they will uh, provide a lot of detail. In addition to and that information, they're required to record things like material and uh, the length of the pipe. And you can leverage that information to update your GIS. You know, a lot of times, you know, these guys are required to record things like material changes in the pipe. And that might be something that you don't necessarily have in your GIS. So there's a lot of great information that you can extract from that PACP inspection. And the condition, you, if you don't have inspection data, you can sort of estimate the condition based upon the age of the pipe and the material. And, and that's, generally some of the starting points when you're um, doing a condition assessment. So if you don't have an actual inspection, you can kind of default to age and material. And then criticality, what, what is the important to your utility? You know, we can't tell you what is important to you, but you as a utility or the government entity, you know the factors that affect the public or the environment more than anyone being local. You know, is it the proximity to wetlands? If you've got an SSO, you might have a huge problem. Um, the diameter of the pipe usually means the volume of um, material, or, you know, for sewage or water on the water side. Um, does it cross multiple lanes of traffic? Does it cross a railroad track? You know, you get into a lot of constructability issues when we talk about um, the transportation problems. 
depth is critical as well. You know, is, is, is it a 30 foot sewer? Is it a 15 foot sewer? That dramatically affects your costs. And things like manholes, you, know, you, you, you should be tagging your manholes that get a force main discharge because th those are, are really critical um, to your, your infrastructure and, and the maintenance of, of your utility. And then also, you know, you, you, you want to get, you know, probably most everyone on this call has that, but you want to get the other existing utilities. Um, for example, you know, if, if you don't maintain, if your utility doesn't maintain the water infrastructure, get that or get the stormwater infrastructure that might be maintained by the county or, or some other uh, political jurisdiction. So you can take that PACP database and we're going to import it and, and this is sort of the nuts and bolts of the process is that PACP inspection has four basic components. It's got, it's an, an MDB database file. It's got ins inspections, it's got conditions, it's got media inspections and media conditions. And you just tell either Esri or the asset management application, here's the four tables that you need. And it goes in and maps all the defects and all the pipes. And it's got a lot of clever technology in there. But let's say that your operator um, doesn't code the upstream, the downstream manhole properly. It'll do a reverse search and say, okay, here's, here's the, this is the pipe that it should be. And it pr produces a report for you. Or conversely, sometimes your GIS might be wrong and your upstream, your downstream are wrong in your GIS, but it'll, it'll make those associations for you. And then it creates something that's called a quick rating. And there's a, there's a lot of power in the quick rating. The quick rating looks at all of the, the defects on a particular pipe, and it's, it categorizes those into structural defects, into service defects. So you can create a, a structural score of your pipe. Um, let's say from, um, it gets a little complicated, but from like zero to five, five being the worst. And um, it creates a, a, a maintenance score as well, which you know a lot of the maintenance scores can be, um, you know, those are defects that can be addressed internally with all of your existing crews. So it provides you um, sort of two different metrics, structurally and maintenance of how to go out and address these different problems within your system. So I kind of showed you some illustrations from Invise's Info Asset Planner, but I, I wanted to share with you that you know, if if you're if you're um, wanted to test this, Esri has what's called the CCTV Manager, and it sort of does the same process. It says, okay, you tell it here here's my GIS infrastructure, my pipe IDs in this field, my manholes are over here. Here's this is the field that tells you what the manhole ID is, and you you can import a PACP database, and they actually have a pretty nice. Um, workflow and tutorial, and they've got, uh, this is a, an Esri solution, so this is a, uh, uh, it's got uh, built-in web maps that you could deploy as well that are, that are pretty effective. The only drawback is that it doesn't import MACP, and then if you're, uh, that, that's in pro, if you're in desktop, if you can manage to find it somewhere, and Esri truck does their best to hide it, but they've got CCTV processor um, which does the same thing as CCTV Manager. It's just geared for ArcGIS desktop. So this is sort of what you get. So on the left-hand side is our inventory. So we've got pipes and, and, and manholes. And on the right, this is what the import produces. So this uh, red pipe, this is a, a structural score of 4132. Um, this has got a, a lot of structural defects. In addition to a lot of structural defects in red, there's a lot of maintenance defects. So the O and M rating is 5131. So this first digit is sort of what the peak score would be like from zero to five, five being the worst. So you can see this pipe's got structural problems and maintenance problems. Um, over here, we've got some issues as well. It also maps what, what are called continuous defects. So for this section of pipe, half the pipe has a defect that runs the length of half the pipe. So, you know, we're, we're in the data and information world. So if, when you look at this information in context with, okay, I've got work orders at this node from my CMMS system, 
Um, I've had historic SSO events here. And a lot of utilities have areas that they call the, you know, their trouble areas. And they know that if I don't go out there and do uh, a vac truck every month, then it leads to um, a potential SSO. So this is a very effective illustration to show um, to your engineers and your management. And a lot of them don't necessarily have this level of visibility as to the condition of their assets. So then you start to take that information. And here's just another example. So here's a pipe that's just a total wreck. And, and you can see all of the um, defects associated with that pipe. And when you look at this in relation to your work order system, what you might notice is I've got a bunch of people that are upstream of this pipe that are giving me lots of complaints. And the, the result is, is very granular. And um, even with the Esri tool, this is the Innovise tool that I'm showing you here, but these are all the defects along a segment of pipe. You've got a cross section of all the different defects and you can actually play the video from within the Esri interface. So this tool is built into GIS. And even if you use the CCTV manager tool or ArcGIS Pro, you can still play the video. And not only that, but if you wanted to go to a particular um, defect, so here's a, a multiple crack, you can click on this point and the video fast forwards to that point of the actual inspection. And that is even capable with the free application from, from Esri. So we take all that information and we, um, you know, we, we, we dashboard it. So we, we will create web maps that show the condition of the assets. Um, we use this information to develop a rehabilitation programs. So we've got the geographies in GIS. Um, we've got the lift station areas in GIS. Um, we have all the other existing utility providers and we give that information sort of as, as web applications to our engineers and they go in and they start saying, okay, um, this red illustration here is we're, we're gonna replace this pipe. This pipe is gonna be lined. This pipe is gonna be CCTV. And we start to package those into rehabilitation projects and the um, upper management or decision makers um, what happens a lot of times now is, is they'll get a trouble call and this is the first place that they go is to this live document and they say, okay, do we have a project coming up there soon or do we have any known issues in that area? And this, this becomes a, a very uh, important resource for people fielding trouble calls, people managing the utility and to develop uh, rehabilitation projects, to find CIP projects. And it gives a lot of visibility to utility operators when you have to ask for dollars. Uh, putting, as we all know in this audience, putting things on a map and having an effective picture tells a tremendous story. So th this is an illustration of sort of the risk evaluation and, and sort of how that information goes into determining um, the risk for, for assets. So you've got condition on one side and you've got the criticality over here. So there, there may be times where you've got um, pipes in a really bad shape, but you know they only serve um, an, an empty lot. So in terms of your rehabilitation program, that's gonna be low on your priority. Um, but other times you might have the intersection of you know, assets that are in very poor condition, but they serve your critical infrastructure. And this is sort of, this matrix sort of helps you decide where to devote your dollars. If you wanted to take a triage approach of, of the big, biggest bang for your buck and reducing risk, this business risk evaluation is, um, is sort of where it starts. So there, there's a lot of great built-in tools um, to help you create those scores. So you kind of rank different parameters on a, on a score of one to five. So you can see over here, I've got major, major uh, transportation crossings, railroad crossings, the quantity of flow, um, the depth, all of these get scores from one to five. And the totality of all of these scores create an overall consequence of failure or an overall likelihood of failure. So these tools help you 
Previously, I used to do these things with complicated scripts, and now that I have this great asset management tool, it, it, uh, it makes it a lot easier. And I'm gonna kind of fly through a lot of this stuff here. What we've done now is we, we've taken the tool and we've, we've, we've sort of automated the engineer's decision process and how to rehabilitate these assets. So once defects are identified, they get run through this decision tree to come up with the, you're trying to get the engineer's thought process out on paper and it produces a report for every asset and it says, okay, I've gone through the decision tree and based upon defects of broken pipe and offset joints, this pipe needs to be replaced. Or, okay, this pipe needs a rehabilitative action, but it's going to be cheaper to line it than it is to replace it. Or it's going to be cheaper to replace it than it is to line it. And it comes up with a rehabilitation recommendation. And this is specific to InnoVise Info Asset Planner. Yeah. I'm going to kind of fly through and get to the fun part. So these are some of the dashboards that we produce and you can punch in an asset number, um, you can punch in a work order, uh, you can punch in an address, you can punch in a list station here, it's gonna take you right there. So, and this is a live representation of, of work that we have going on um, for one of our um, uh, major clients in Central Florida. We also take the, those rehabilitation programs and we can produce drawings within GIS. So this is outside of the, the CAD environment and we leverage the database tools. Um, this is a, the production matching, mapping extension from Esri and it populates the schedules on the actual drawings of the work that needs to be performed. And this is a, a really effective illustration of how looking at work orders geographically. So this whole set of icons here are work orders in the system. And unless you look at these, uh, when you look at these just on a table, you lose a lot of context. But when you look at these uh, in a geographic context, this actually developed into a fairly major rehabilitation program where identified work orders, sent out crews to TV, got condition inspections, and this developed into a rehabilitation program. And we, we successfully used this to um, you know, define about 70 projects, um, 34 miles of pipe, and you can see the dollar amounts associated with this. And um, you can migrate this um, really into a great management program, utilizing the GIS tools, creating dashboards for the project managers to manage their project. So I'm gonna cut it off there. I didn't have time to show you the live demo, but uh, I guess, Steve, uh, I'll stop there. We can open it up for questions. Sounds good, Alex. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so does anybody have any questions for Alex while he is here? You can either put them in the chat or unmute yourself. I don't see anything in the chat. I agree. I guess sometimes it's kind of hard to put a, a price tag on, on the value of uh, isolating a problem before it happens. Uh, because it just takes one major pipe in a downtown area to burst and it's going to be on the five o'clock news. So uh, definitely better to be more proactive and, uh, you know, spend some money up front, maintaining, inspecting, identifying where the, the serious critical failures could be and addressing them, you know, with projects and whatnot. So uh, very good, Alex. I uh, certainly appreciate you presenting. Uh, we've got a little bit, uh, we might have, what's that? Okay, okay. Well, we do have a question. Thank you. Uh, what is the initial investment to put together a system like this? Alex, can you address that? Sure. So um, when I did a pilot program on this, I used the free Esri tool um, to begin with. So, so that's free. Uh, the Innovise platform, which is built directly inside of GIS, I'm not going to kid you, it is expensive. Uh, I think Info Asset Planner, um, don't quote me, but it's somewhere in the realm of 75K. But what you save in terms of analysis, and it, it has native integrations with the majority of your larger CM, CMMS programs. So CityWorks, um, you know, all the products from Oracle, 
you know, all your major CMS systems have native integration. So you just tell it, okay, this is my work order system. This is where the SQL database is. And it has all those native imports natively. So it's been worth every penny, but the initial uh, expense is rough. So it definitely takes some support by upper management to have those kind of funds to implement a, a system like that for sure. You know, can you show the CCT ex CCTV example slide again? Sure. Yeah. Am I still sharing my screen? Yes. Okay. So is it this one? I'm not sure. Okay, let's go. It's probably this one. It was the one with the cameraing. Oh, the camera. Okay. Yeah, I'm showing our engineers here looking as well. Okay. Hey, uh, sorry, I hate to interrupt, but thanks again, Alex. Uh, excellent presentation, but it looks like we're going to go back to the main room, get everybody back together in the same room since we don't have a second presentation in room number one. So I will see you back over to the main room. I think it'll be put there automatically if you don't manually change your location. Thank you. We'll see you in the main room. <laughs>